What's going on YouTube? This is Boxing Wave and we are back with another fight breakdown this weekend on ESPN Plus about 10 p.m. Eastern. Arthur Betterbeev is going to be defending his three major titles up at light heavyweight against Callum Smith. All right. Should be a good fight, at least for the amount of time that it lasts. Um, Callum Smith is coming off of a year and a half layoff. A year and a half layoff. He has not fought. Since August of 2022. Now we know Better BF has been injured on and off over the years. He's always had some sort of injury in between every fight. You know, something. Something's always wrong. He's definitely injury prone. But with that being said, he's been more active than Callum Smith has. You know, and even before this layoff, Callum Smith is only fighting once a year. You know, so when he lost to Canelo... He only fought once a year after that loss or even even that year as well. You know, so Callum Smith, he hasn't been active, you know, but he did move up to 175 and he has looked pretty good in his last couple of fights, even though they're not with the top level fighters at the division. All right. But we'll talk about that. Callum Smith is 33 years old. Um, better be if it's going to be turning 39 this month. All right. Many people like myself still consider the uh, better be of to be a pound for pound fighter, you know, somewhere in the top ten. Uh check out my pound for pound video if you haven't already. Um but better BF has been a, a, a phenomenal fighter over the years. Um crazy amateur backgrounds for so many great fighters over the years. Um uh, Use, Kovalev, like he's fought them all over the years as an amateur. And um, as a pro, you know, went straight into the fire, you know, turning pro 10 years ago and fighting former champions and fighting high ranking fighters, seven, eight fights in, you know. So and he's been doing his thing. He's uh, knocked out every single one of his opponents. All right. Um, he has a 100 percent KO ratio, but he is getting up there and he is pushing 40. All right. And that's really it. You know, when it comes to the breakdowns with Better BF, you just kind of like, with me at least, is it going to be a good fight? You know, I'm expecting a good fight for the amount of time that it's going to last. That's all it is with me. It's been like that for some time now. Um, I've been wanting to really, really see him fight Bevo for the last five plus years, you know. Um, I said this recently, ever since the... Kovalev, Adonis Stevenson, Andre Ward class has retired, and Kovalev actually supposed to be coming back to fight. Um, but ever since that class of light heavies, I've been wanting to see these two fight. I mean, they're clearly the two best fighters, and they've both been fighting really good fighters. They've been fighting all the other good fighters in the division, but they just haven't fought each other yet. So hopefully, we get that fight this year. Um, if better be if is to win this fight. But yeah, going back to what I was saying, when it comes to the better be of fights, it's more like I'm doing film study to see what does Callum Smith have? How can he win? And, you know, and I honestly believe in order to beat better BF, you really have to have a full package. When I look at his resumes and, and just look at all his fights, because I've been watching all of the fights. I've been watching all of them. You know, I even went to his last two fights and I enjoy going to see him fight. You know, even when I'm rooting against him as a fan, I know what it is every single time, you know, and uh, I thought Joe Smith was going to at least give him a war, you know, leading up to the end of that fight. And he made Joe Smith look like nothing, you know, I mean, Anthony Yard gave me a better fight, but I knew what it was before I bought that ticket and that flight to go out there. I knew what it was. That I just like the entertain. I like the matchups that he's in because he's either fighting a good boxer like a Marcus Brown, like someone that can move and use the ring as well, or even like uh, Alexander Vozik. You know, like Vozik did well, but is either they don't have they have the boxing ability. They they can move really well. They can avoid a lot of punches and and catch uh, Anthony Yard, for example. You know, he, for his fight, Yard did a good job timing 
uh, better be of as he rushes in sometimes. You know, sometimes he comes straight in. He doesn't have the longest arms. You know, so sometimes he just kind of rushes in. He'll throw the one two one or the he'll double the jab and just rushes right in sometime. And he can get caught with, you know, a left hook, you know, and it, with guys that knew how to time it and move and step around him. But when he's finding the punchers, it seems like the punchers, he's able to get rid of them quicker because they just don't have the skills. When you look at Callum Johnson fight, when you look at um, Joe Smith, you know, these guys are throwing jabs that they're too close. He can counter over the top. He kind of draws them in. So it depends on who he's facing. When he's fighting the mover, he's doing a job of cutting them off, you know, and trapping them. Um, but he gets clipped sometimes rushing in. But they don't have the power to really respect that. I feel like Yard had a good... I feel like with every fighter, there's a, a, a weakness there that is just too big of a weakness for in order for them to win, you know? And when I see Yard, it's like, okay, Yard is doing good with the counters. Every time he clips, better be with a good shot, he kind of feels himself and he starts to... He goes into the battle... And you got to remember, you, you're still fighting one of the hardest hitters out there. So every time I remember seeing that fight, every time Yard landed a real good shot and better be backed up, Yard would just dash in there and then he get caught with a bigger shot and get knocked down or something. You know what I mean? And the same things happen with like Callum Johnson. and Like you have these guys that just every there's a weakness with each and every one of these fighters that kept them from winning the big one. And Callum, jo Callum Smith, who's his opponent, who's going to be his opponent on Saturday. Again, the inactivity, man. And even so, like, even without the inactivity, when I see Callum, like, good job, big guy, definitely has the power. You know, I mean, he's he's been in some good fights. He, he has some good experience, not on the level of better BF. But he's been in there. He he did wear the, win the World Boxing Super Series, um, the early one of the earliest ones by beating George Groves, which was a very good win at the time because George Groves was still good at that time. Um, you know, he uh, first time I seen him fight was when he uh, stopped Rocky Fielding years back. You know, I I, I know it was a big uh, UK fight, a lot of trash talk between the two. That's the first fight that I ever watched him on. Um, he had a fight with John Ryder where I don't really necessarily think he won, you know, um, I don't know about it being a robbery cause it was still a close fight, but I thought Ryder didn't really respect him like that. You know, um, same with Canelo, Canelo battered him for 12 rounds, didn't knock him out, but damaged him and, you know, messed his arm up and everything. And, you know, to be honest at that point, he probably really was drained and probably wasn't a division for too long. You know, I think after the George Groves win, he probably should have moved up. Him and Zerto, those guys were way too big to still be fighting at super middleweights. And if people say that about, uh, what's this guy's name that's down there? Um, that everybody wants to fight Canelo. Anyway, um, Benavides. People are saying the same about him, but I think Zerto and Callum Smith were just way too big as 168 pounds those guys are big guys those guys are like literally literally cruiserweights fighting at 168 you know what i mean and um i like that callum moved up you know he lost to canelo and he moved up and he took uh, the fight against balder league and castillo you know, castillo's been in there with some good guys balder league i never seen him fight before but Bowder Leak, to me, was doing a better boxing in that fight, all right? But he was just making a mistake of having these exchanges with Callum, and Callum was clearly the bigger puncher between the two, and he got clipped, and he paid for it. With all that being said, going off those two wins, yes, he looks stronger. He looks better, but against who exactly, you know? Who did he look better against? And then when you have the delay, it's like, I don't know what I'm really getting out of Callum. Is he really better? Is he really better? There are certain things I do. Like, I did like the jabs 
Um, you know, I did like a little bit of the head movement that I saw in the Bowder League fight, you know. But are these things that could win him the fight against one of the best in the world? One of the most powerful in the world? I don't think so. I don't think so. You know, I think with Callum, one of the major problems is, too, he's he's not much of a mover. Um, and for his sake, I think he would need to be defensively. He's just not slick enough. He doesn't use the ring well enough. He doesn't set traps well enough. You know, he's just kind of like, he fights really tall. You know, he's not the greatest at um, controlling distance, you know, like, uh, I think he, you know, has a decent reach and, you know, obviously he's really tall, but it, like, it seemed like Canelo had no problems getting to him, you know? And, and, and I don't think Arthur who is able to cover rage really quickly with his feet, I don't think Arthur is going to have much of a problem too. And, and again, if Callum is going to win this, the fight, he would have to knock him out. I mean, he has a puncher's chance, but who didn't have a puncher's chance? Who didn't have a puncher's chance? Now, I, know, I think Joe Smith was a little too wild, all right? Joe was just walking into overhand rights um, and clubbing right hands. He was walking into those. So I get that. I don't think Callum Smith is going to be that reckless. But how much more is he bringing to the table here? You know, I think he's kind of limited as a fighter. I don't think he has great inside game. Again, when it comes to controlling distance, he's not really that good at it. You know, I think he has a great left hook. So if he can try to draw Arthur in for an exchange on the inside, even though Arthur is a very damaging left hook as well, and he has, you know, the shorter, I think he has shorter arms, is I would still lean towards better BF in those situations but if Callum is looking to win and looking to hurt this guy he would need to draw him in to one of those shots because Callum alone just from the outside he's not going to be able to keep that distance from Arthur Arthur is very quick feet again very good at closing off the gap uh closing cl um, cutting the ring off and closing the gap and you know unless Callum finds a way to to time him perfectly with that big left hook and damage him. Maybe he could get something in, you know, but I, I just don't see him. He's a rusty fighter. He's He needs more fights. He needs more preparation for this kind of fight. He just hasn't had it over the years, you know, and especially at 175. He did good at 168, but 175, he should have had the fights with the Joe Smiths of the world and the Anthony Yards and the Joshua Buatzis. You know, and I'm not saying this is his fault. Some of this delay is not his fault, but he should have had these fights to prepare for this kind of fight. And when you see a fight like Canelo being able to close the distance so easily, you know, and someone that was able to just do have his way with him, back him up, make force on the fight on his back foot the entire time. This is what Joe this is what Arthur Better Be if is made for. This is what he does, you know. He wants to put the pressure on me. He can change the game and back up and, and, and use his legs and use, his, use the ring as well. We've seen that against Callum Jansen. We've seen that against Joe Smith Jr. So he can fight whatever way and adjust to whatever his opponent is doing. But when it comes to tracking people down, he's literally one of the best in the world. you know. And I think what Callum has for him here is the power and the fact that better be if is aging. So he might timing might be on his side. But again, when we're talking about a guy that has not fought at this level before outside of Canelo and has not been active at all, it's really hard for me to pick him as a winner. You know, because even though it better be of his agent, he's not shown that he's slipping up at all. At all to me. You know, he's not shown any signs of that. You know, so anyway, I have better be him stopping him, but very late in the fight. I think Callum has shown to be pretty durable. Um, he's a tough dude. He's a big guy. And I think um, better be if is still going to proceed with caution um, because he is fighting someone with power. 
You know, unless better be if it's just completely reckless and just doesn't show any respect. Yes, he can get clipped at any time. I mean, this is boxing at the end of the day. Upsets do happen. But better be if it's just too good. And I just can't see him or Bivo losing to anyone outside of each other. Um, Callum Smith is a good fighter. But I, I just need to little, see a little bit more before I start picking him to win fights on this level. All right. Just doesn't have the speed. Doesn't know the range as well. Um, does not have the timing. It just doesn't have the the defense. He's just too slow. I, I just can't see it. I can't see it. Anyway, I have better be it by late stoppage. I'm talking like 10th round. All right. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Please like the video, share the video, and I'll see you guys on Saturday. Peace.